So in this video, we're going to talk about what an analytics lifecycle is, and really the most popular lifecycle, which is the CRISP-DM methodology. But before we dive in, let me mention, if you want to learn a little bit more about business analytics, we've got a free cheat sheet with some key terms, concepts, tools, and job tips over at CodyBaldwin.com. Now let's talk about the analytics lifecycle. And you can think about this as like the scientific method for analytics. It's a tried and true way of doing things. And the most common life cycle is what's called the CRISP-DM, the cross-industry standard process for data mining. And there's really five pieces to it. You start with business understanding, understanding your business problem. Then you go to data understanding. Then data preparation, getting the data ready. Doing modeling, which we'll talk about. And then evaluating your model and deploying it, actually using it in the real world. Now, what's important here is you, and the reason why we use this life cycle is because if you rush into analytics, you might just crash and burn. You don't want to spend a bunch of money on, on, on analytics without having a business goal that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so let's talk about these five aspects of the life cycle or phases in a little more detail. So let's start with business understanding. We should always start with business problems. We aren't just doing analytics for fun. We need to have some business goal in mind. Some examples might be to optimize pricing to boost revenue, or to segment customers to tailor product offers to them, or pinpoint bottlenecks and failure points in our supply chain. These are some business problems that we might be trying to solve using analytics. Now let's talk about the next phase, data understanding. And a lot of what we're doing here is looking at what data we have and what data we need, and trying to cover some of those gaps. And then when we get the data, we might ask questions like, what's the availability of the data, the quality of it, the granularity, how deep or detailed does it go, what's the frequency of it, how often does it get updated, and so on. Now, as we're trying to understand and explore our data, oftentimes we use a sandbox, which is a safe space to explore our data, so we don't mess up what's called production, where all the live data is. We don't want to accidentally delete something while we're trying to understand our data. Then there's data preparation, the next phase. And oftentimes this can be the most time consuming piece of this. It can take a lot of effort to clean and scrub your data to get it ready for further modeling and analysis. So here's an example. Maybe you get some data like this and don't be surprised if you see something like this. Now you have two customers. One of them has a city that's missing. The states are in different formats and also the date of birth. And so what you might have to do is do cleaning to get this in a good place in order to do the next step, to do your modeling. Now, what you also might want to do at this point is go back to the technology teams and say, let's make sure we can restrict the inputs that we're getting so that when we need to do analysis, we actually get good quality data. Now, after data preparation, we're going to go to the modeling phase. Now, a common question I get is, what actually is a model? Here's a definition of it, a simplified description of a system or process to assist calculations and predictions. Whew, that's a mouthful. Here's the way I would interpret that. A model is something that mimics the real world. It's our version of it. Maybe when you were a kid, you built a Lego model that looked like the White House or the pyramids in Egypt. That was a model of the real thing. As we try to make predictions, we try to build a model and we try to see if we can get a good but also simple model to help us make our predictions. Here's an example of a model. A model that predicts the likelihood that a car insurance customer will get into an accident in the next year. A model that makes that prediction to mimic what might happen in the real world. And so in this modeling phase, we're going to do a few things. We're going to do exploratory analysis on the data we're going to do variable selection to figure out what variables should be included in our model. And then we're also going to select the model and then fine tune it. Now, common modeling tools we're going to use here are Python or R. Those are probably the two most common modeling tools. Now, after we've defined our business question and then understood and prepared the data, built our model, then we're going to evaluate and deploy the model. So we ask questions like, how effective is this model? Is it working well? Are the predictions fairly accurate? 
And if so, are we prepared to launch it? So once we build our model, we can't just walk away. We actually have to start using it. All right, thanks for watching. As a reminder, if you're interested in a free business analytics cheat sheet covering some key terms, concepts, tools, and job tips, you can find one at CodyBaldwin.com.